Hey everybody, this is Josh from What's All About, and in this review, we're going to look at the G Gerlash Bathyscaph. Let's check it out. Now, G Gerlash was created after the founder wanted to show that both in Poland and abroad, products with those three words made in Poland are of the highest quality and that they can be proud of them. He noticed that a lot of Polish work is reproductive and not innovative, such as they manufacture but they don't develop. Uh, you know, they build things like cars, fridges and TVs, but they don't have brands based in Poland. G. Gerlash wanted to be the leading Polish watch manufacturer. Now, I've reviewed a good number of G. Gerlash watches and I'm pleased to say that they are indeed fulfilling this goal. You know, the watches are innovative, extremely well built and also really, really reasonable in terms of price as well. Their latest model, the Bathyscaphe, supports this even more. I mean, just look at this absolute beast. Whilst its primary inspiration is a bathyscaph, it could also be, you know, the, the timepiece equivalent of the Polish 7TP tank, for instance. Now, a bathyscaph uh, means deep ship, and it's a self-propelled vehicle used for deep sea dives. One of the most important and famous bathyscaphs is called the Trieste. Uh, from the 1960s, it reached the deepest known point on the Earth's surface, the Challenger Deep, in the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. I mean, if you think about it, that is an incredible achievement all those years ago. And the influence is clear on this watch as well with its impressive construction and that whopping 500 meters water resistance. The G. Gerlash Bathyscaphe is available in four different colors, yellow, orange, blue, or this one, which is graphite. And at first glance, you know, it appears to be an absolutely immense watch with a pretty reasonable price tag as well. 1,899 Poland Zloty, which is about 385 pounds or $520. Now I'm not gonna lie, in terms of look, it is definitely a Marmite watch in that you'll either love it or you'll hate it. Personally, I respect the bold and aggressive appearance, but it's probably not the kind of watch that I would go for. I would prefer, you know, a slightly lighter, more friendly uh, diver, but obviously this is all completely down to personal choice, isn't it? So, ready? Let's check it out. So I'm gonna start off by just talking about the design a little bit more. It's not gonna be for everyone. It's strong, it's bulky, the design is determined uh, as well. For many, they love watches that are unique and have, uh, you know, outstanding characteristics. For others, like, like me, it might be a little bit uh, too much for them. However, you know, when I actually think about it, you know, I probably am on the fence. I do appreciate the uniqueness of the watch and I do really uh, dig the rugged design of it as well. But perhaps, I don't know, personally I think it could probably be a little bit less in your face. The Bathyscaphe is, you know, a big, heavy, chunky thing with this overbearing bezel as its primary design feature. The case profile, if you look at it sideways, pretty plain and simple which only exaggerates the thick set appearance. You know, it is literally just a slab of steel if you look at it from the side. Dumpy lugs and a surprisingly short lug to lug length of 53 millimeters means that it's easier to wear than the 44 millimeter diameter suggests. Drilled through lugs are always good to see on a proper tool watch. Uh, it makes changing straps dead easy and obviously you're less likely to damage the lugs when you do. One thing's for sure though, at 16.3 millimeters tall, this thing is thick. There's no chance at all of it fitting under a cuff, but then I would highly doubt you would wear a watch like this in a, a smart setting. The size, you know, if you think about it, it's probably all down to that really, really impressive 500 meters water resistance. The aggressive bezel grip means that it's amazingly easy to use. The 120 clicks are solid and loud, there is a tiny, teeny, tiny bit of wiggle and back play, but it does line up pretty nicely and the wiggle is, is minuscule, you don't even notice it. The case is graced with simple and very purposeful finishing and, uh, you know, really solid, really decent production 
uh, all over. It's completely brushed as well, which is obviously good for longevity. The only stitch of polishing on this watch is at the very top of these raised markings on the bezel, which does provide a little bit of a flash of light, a little bit of glitz and glamour against the blasted finish of the top of the bezel. So that's quite a nice uh, appearance, you know, when you get it looking just right at the light. The loom is of pretty good strength uh, as well. It's also cool to see that the bold outer minute track lights up and that's loomed. The large arrow at 12 in the bezel insert, that's very purposeful and the thick minute hands offset the skeletonized loom tip of the hour hand as well. All in all, it's actually really interesting to view this watch in the dark, which I always like to see. The lacquer crown guards allows the screw in crown to really protrude and if you're not careful, you know, if you're one of those people who do find that uh, crowns, if you wear your watch on your left hand side and the crown digs into your wrist, you will most likely have the same issue uh, with this watch because it is a big old crown. However, the size of it does mean that it's really easy to use, good grip, uh, nice solid thread uh, as well. It also gives you the impression that it'll be able to take a knock or two as well. You know, it's really, re it just feels really solid and sturdy in the hand, mainly because of just the sheer size of it. It has the G Gerlash logo uh, embossed on the end, which is polished uh, against the frosted backdrop. So that's a nice bit of detailing on the crown too. The dial is just as over-engineered as the rest of the watch. The chunky brushed hour markers offer a, a real good sense of quality. You know, they're really deep and really well made. And I love seeing big, fat, deep hour markers. And they're set against a really beautiful, interesting textured top, which just reflects the light so graciously in a variety of angles, variety of situations. I do really like textured uh, dials. So that's a, a really nice visual aspect of the dial. I also think that this choice is the graphite uh, option as well. And I think it provides you know, a really nice uh, industrial feel to it, which complements the rest of the watch. Obviously the, the chunkiness of the, the watch is very industrial, so I think it all works nicely as a package. Out of all of them, the graphite is definitely my, my favorite color. And I, I do like the orange, slightly orangey red uh, accents with the logo, with the hand, and the water resistance 500 rotor system printed at the bottom of the dial as well. Nice little complementing colors there. I always love seeing really unique and interesting handsets. And the uh, Bathyscaphe certainly has an interesting handset. They're large, they're legible, and I, I also really like the way that the seconds hand and the hours hand have very slight um, semi-skeletonization as well. They're still bold, it's still readable, but I do like being able to see uh, that skeletonization. Again, it keeps things interesting. Certainly does have a solid uniqueness uh, about it. So just moving on to the case back then, as you can see, deep stamped, features a detailed illustration of a bathyscaphe surrounded by some specifications around the outside. It's clearly quite thick as well, because if you have a look at the holes where you can get your case back removal tool in, they go really, really deep. So again, because of the 500 meters water resistance, clearly a very deep, solid, a uh, chunky case back, which is uh, always good to see. Shows that little bit of uh, close attention to detail. Silicon strap, beautifully soft and man manipulative. As you can see there, just so supple. And when you have it on, it fits so snugly uh, to the wrist. It's because of the softness, it's very comfortable as well. You know, you don't get itchiness or irritation. I've noticed as well, it's not a massive dust magnet. Some of these silicon straps just absolutely attract dust like crazy, but with this one, I haven't really noticed it as much. I do like the subtle design features to it as well. We have a very slight channel, which goes along both ends. These little holes at the top of either end, again, they don't serve much, but interesting. I do like the wide uh, notches as well, which matches the wide tongue on the tang buckle. So the brush buckle is rugged in appearance, just to match the rest of the watch. It's fully brushed with a nice wide top bar with the G Gerlash logo, nice and deeply and um, accurately engraved there. So the movement, the Seiko NH35, trusty old movement that I see in probably about 90% of affordable divers at the moment. It's starting to get a bit bored of it, to be honest, but you know, it's easy to see and understand why it gets used so much. Rustic, reliable, cheap. It's not exciting, uh, it's not extravagant, 
so don't get excited about it. The specs are so-so as well. Low beat rate of 21.6 thousand beats per hour, so that's six ticks a second. 24 joules, around 41 hour power reserve, a hacking seconds hand, and hand and automatic winding capabilities as well. And I've tested this one and its accuracy and it's coming in at a really impressive plus 4.1 seconds a day. So um, I, w I assume that G-Girlish have done some sort of regulation. So that's only a good thing. Now, when you look at this and you first put it on, you might think that, you know, if you put your hands out wide, you might ah, topple over because of the sheer weight of it. But in actual fact, it's only 158 grams. So, you know, some watches with stainless steel bracelets, they sometimes knock, you know, 200 grams. So it's actually not as heavy as quite a lot of other watches. So that's probably mainly down to the very lightweight uh, aspect of the, the silicon strap. But it does mean that it's actually easier to wear than you might uh, initially expect. It still feels nice and solid, solid and chunky on the wrist, but just that that slightly lighter weight than I was expecting is good in terms of uh, wearability. So what are my final thoughts then? Well, at a price of 1,899 Polish zloty or 389 pounds or around $520, there's no doubt that you are getting a lot of watch for your money. The build quality and the specs to price ratio was never in question. Instead, the question is, do you like the look of it? After all, as I mentioned in the intro, this is a Marmite watch. You will either like it or you won't like it visually. It is 100% going to be divisive uh, in terms of looks. But I think in some respects, that is what is so appealing uh, about it, don't you think? Even if you don't like how it looks, I find it so refreshing to find a watch that does look different, that does look unique. It's a refreshing change to the droves of same old, same old divers we, so, we see so much of nowadays. So in that respect, I still do think, even if at first glance you're repulsed by it, which you might be, um, it's still worth having a closer look at it. Um, after all, it is a wonderful brand. You know, they're a Polish brand. It's manufactured in Pol Poland as well. A great value for money watch too. Uh, and if you don't like the Bathyscaphe, then certainly check out the other watches because I have always been impressed with the build quality of uh, Giga Lash watches. So there we go. So I'd like to finally apologize for my hair. Uh, I'm getting this like weird flappy bit here because it's just getting so long and barbers aren't open yet, but hopefully in a couple of weeks, no, in a couple of months, they will be, and I'll be able to have a nice, nicely trimmed head. Anyway, so that concludes my review. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and also comment your thoughts on this watch below. I'll see you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.